The number 10 worst country in the world in terms of Christian persecution, according to the Open Doors 2020 World Watch List, is India. Not an easy video to make because I have a lot of fans from India, Christians and Hindus. In fact, I have so many fans in India that for many of my videos, India is the main source of views. When I host a video dealing with certain topics like the claims of Zakir Naik, more people watch my video in India than in the United States. So I know I have a lot of Indian viewers and I know they'll be watching this video. But let's see if we can get to the bottom of this. Let me say four things here at the beginning. First, to you Hindus who are watching, I understand why some of you would be upset at Christians and Muslims. There are Christian-majority countries and Muslim-majority countries all over the place. Hindus have one area of the world, and Christians and Muslims are there trying to convert Hindus to Christianity and Islam. I understand why this would upset you. It's human nature. Second, when we talk about Christian persecution in India, we're not talking about every area of India. I understand that there are plenty of areas where Hindus and Christians get along very well. But just because Hindus and Christians get along in many areas, this doesn't mean that we should ignore the persecution of Christians in other areas. Third, to you Hindus who don't want me talking about the persecution of Christians in India, keep in mind that we have the same rules as when we talk about Muslims or atheists or Christians. If we're criticizing the actions of individuals, we're not talking about everyone in a group. If you're a Hindu and you have no problem with Christians and you don't persecute Christians, then I'm not talking about you when I talk about Christian persecution in India. So don't interpret everything as an attack on you or even on Hinduism. Fourth, don't be the sort of people who want to cover up evil who want to cover up evil deeds because they don't want to be embarrassed. There were pedophiles serving as Catholic priests for many, many years who got away with it because people didn't want to embarrass the Catholic Church. Even people who were molested by priests would often keep quiet about it because they didn't want to embarrass the Church. But guess what? People eventually had to speak out because that was the only way to deal with the problem. Similarly, there are all kinds of problems in the Muslim world. Pedophile imams, muta marriage, aka prostitution, wife beating, sexual assault during the Hajj, and so on. Muslims usually don't want people to talk about these things because they're worried that it will embarrass their religion. But if no one brings these issues to the surface, nothing will ever change. So, we have to bring up difficult issues, even if it's embarrassing, even if it hurts. With this in mind, we'll take a look at what Open Doors says about the persecution of Christians in India, then we'll look at some examples, and then we'll read some comments from Christians and Hindus in the comments section. The Open Doors Country Report begins with the primary cause of the persecution. Hindu nationalism and attacks with impunity. Since the current ruling party took power in 2014, incidents against Christians have increased, and Hindu radicals often attack Christians with little to no consequences. The view of the Hindu nationalists is that to be Indian is to be Hindu, so any other faith, including Christianity, is viewed as non-Indian. Also, converts to Christianity from Hindu backgrounds or tribal religions are often extremely persecuted by their family members and communities. How Christians are suffering Christians in India face horrific levels of violence from extremists. Thousands of attacks take place every year. Several states in India have adopted anti-conversion laws, and the ruling Hindu nationalist Bharatiya Janata Party BJP, has made it clear that it wants to impose these laws nationwide. Such laws are often used as an excuse to disrupt church services and harass Christians and make it incredibly difficult for Christians to share their faith with others. Converts to Christianity from a Hindu background are especially vulnerable to persecution and are constantly under pressure to return to Hinduism, especially through campaigns known as Gar Wapsi, homecoming. They are often physically assaulted and sometimes killed. 
Examples. On January 9th, 2019, hardline Hindus tore down a church building in Narnapadu village, Mupala Mandal, Gunter district, in the state of Andhra Pradesh, because it was built on the west side of a village which they claimed violated Hindu principles of placement and positioning. On April 10th, 2019, a Christian tribal man was attacked with swords, sickles, and iron sticks in the Indian state of Jharkhand. He was killed by a crowd of Hindu radical cow protectors on suspicion of having slaughtered an ox considered sacred by Hindus. Three other tribal Christians were injured in the attack. On October 2nd, 2019, a Christian birthday celebration was attacked by Hindu radicals in Vasala Mary village, located 40 miles outside of Hyderabad in India's Telangana state. According to local reports, the mob of 30 radical nationalists stormed into the Christian home where guests had gathered for the birthday celebrations. The radicals vandalized decorations, terrified the guests, and destroyed several household items owned by the Christian family. Now, they gave three quick examples here, but last night when I started looking up examples of Christian persecution in India, I found a lot. A lot more than this, and a lot worse than this. So, for those of you who are saying, oh, there's no persecution of Christians in India, say it again, say it one more time, because there's enough persecution of Christians in India for me to post a video about this every single day, forever, or until you admit that there's a problem. Now, let's go through some comments, because Christians and Hindus who live in India will have a much better understanding of the issue than I do. I've been to India. There is a large Christian and Catholic population, and they are living in harmony amongst people, but there are some incidents against them and others by Islamic extremists and far-right Hindutva supporters, such as killing priests and burning churches, but it's not as extreme as Saudi Arabia. A lot of people noted that it's odd to rank India higher than Saudi Arabia, but there's a reason for that. There aren't many Christians in Saudi Arabia. The Christians who are there are usually hired foreign workers who have to agree when they enter the country that they aren't going to practice their faith in public. So there just aren't a lot of public displays of Christianity in Saudi Arabia, and thus there aren't many attacks. There aren't any church buildings in Saudi Arabia, so churches aren't burned down. In India, by contrast, there are millions of Christians and there are thousands of churches. Christian missionaries are preaching to Hindus, and there are areas where Hindus really don't like that. I am from India. I realized the inauthenticity of this in-depth report when I saw India at number 10. Many Christians, also known as rice bag converts, are extremely poor and illiterate people, especially tribals, who are targeted for conversion by missionaries by spreading lies about other religions and are therefore confronted. The president of the opposition party, the INC, is of Italian origin and a Roman Catholic, and that party has been in power for 70 years. The lying fake report is a smear campaign against India. Of course, it must have mentioned Graham Staines without going into the details. Is there any Mother Teresa in those other countries? I'm not sure what details about Graham Staines would help your case. Graham Staines was an Australian Christian missionary who was part of an organization in India that took care of lepers. Staines was burned alive in his car, along with his two sons, who were 10 years old and 6 years old. He was killed for his missionary activities. So please elaborate if you think we're missing something. Praise the Lord, brother. We watch all your videos. Thank you for the great work. Regarding India, statistics are wrong. There are more Christians in this country, more than 10 to 20 times. Majority are Hindus on documents because of caste reservations in India, and they don't bother to change that. The mentioned statistics, there is persecution only in a few states like Bihar, Chhattisgarh. Other states are relatively peaceful. The work you do is like no other, God bless you always, love from India, and it really doesn't deserve the 10th spot. Western media is always sarcastic about India, BBC, hate harboring countries, Pakistan, well up, riots through proxies, saying they are Christians from India and are persecuted. Some are really violent and real, some aren't. 
The list is probably made by some salty missionaries who are getting resistance and converting Hindus. Remember, India made laws to give citizenship to persecuted Christians from Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Bangladesh. How come the tenth position you have India? I am an Indian Hindu, never saw anyone abuse or hurt a Christian. In fact, we really don't think about them. We have a raise in Islamic extremism here, so we are worried about that. There's a fallacy here, which we're going to see over and over again. It's called the fallacy of composition. You commit the fallacy of composition when you conclude that since something is true of a part, it must also be true of the whole. Atoms aren't alive, therefore human beings, which are made of atoms, aren't alive. That's a fallacy. Hindus don't persecute Christians in my town in India, therefore Hindus don't persecute Christians in India. Fallacy. India is listed in extreme persecution? Please explain how. I seriously don't know about such thing. Because Christians benefit more from government schemes like reservation system and Awas Yajna housing scheme. In fact, tribal religions which are about extinct are only because of evangelist organizations who perform mass conversions of tribal by luring them with money. We'll be waiting for your video on India. I've noticed that a lot of the comments are similar to comments about Jews in America. Jews are controlling everything with money. Christians are only having mass conversions because they're bribing everyone with money. Oh, David, I wish there were a way for you to talk to Lord Sinrock. He is a minister in India. He has a YouTube channel by his name. I teach ESL online and have students worldwide. Some of my Indian students have shared about people being baptized and being murdered the same day by family and friends. Sometimes the Muslims will stand on the banks of a river and write down the names of those being baptized and target them. To be a Christian must mean you have a real relationship with the living Jesus Christ or you will crumble when you are doused with gasoline in a circle of men with burning torches, I was told by one student. To be absent from the body is to be present with Jesus Christ and the Lord God. I thank you. You have helped me to understand how to speak to my Muslim students to rock their faith in lies and seek the real, present, living Lord God. I'm praying for your family. I understand a little about loss. I lost my sister, husband, three friends, and my mom in a two-year period, and my two brothers and one son will only shun me for becoming a real Christian. You are part of the reason, after being a Christian for years, I became born again. Thank you. May God's Spirit bring true peace to you and your lovely wife and family. As an Indian Christian, I don't agree that India is 10th most Christian persecuted place on earth way before China, Syria. Proud to be an Indian Christian. I'm a Christian in India. India has always been a secular state that has never imprisoned, ostracized, or hurt anyone on the basis of religion. Christians do not face any persecutions in India. Rather, we rolled out a bill to accept asylum-seeking Christians living in Islamic countries. That is an interesting claim. Christians don't face any persecution in India. None. So the BBC is lying when it reports. More than a dozen churches have allegedly been ransacked by Hindu radicals in Karnataka. Tension in the coastal city of Mangalore has diminished after three days of riots in which churches and clergymen were attacked. Recent anti-Christian violence in Karnataka and in the eastern state of Orissa have led to calls for a ban on Bajrang Dal and another militant Hindu organization, the Vishwa Hindu Parishad, VHP World Hindu Council. Karnataka's chief minister, B.S. Yediyurapa, said the attacks were provoked by conversions of Hindus to Christianity by some Christian groups. He blamed a Protestant group for triggering the disturbances in the state by distributing literature which insulted Hindu gods. Christian leaders have denied the charge and said that Mr. Yediyurapa's Bharatiya Janata Party, BJP, was inciting violence instead of calming the tense situation in the state. Christians say lower caste Hindus convert willingly to escape the Hindu caste system. Someone should probably report the BBC for making up these stories. 
OMG, India is in the list in number 10. I am by faith a Hindu, but I studied at a missionary school. We had Bible and gospel class by Father Charles Pollard, and we loved him, and he in turn was our best friend, philosopher, and guide. I don't like Islam personally because of its messed up, twisted, degenerate, radicalized views, but never Christianity. I know many who dislike Islam and overly religious Muslims, but not a single person I know dislikes Christians. This would be indeed eye-opening. Brother David, eagerly waiting for your video. India is hell for Christians, trust me. Do you see the contrast? Some people are saying that India is wonderful for Christians. Others are saying that India is really, really bad for Christians. How do we reconcile the claims? I'm guessing that Christians and Hindus get along really well in some areas and that they don't get along really well in other areas. Honestly, I am extremely shocked that India ranks 10th in the list. Now I will have to wait for your video tomorrow to understand more. But recently, in some reports, India was ranked the fifth most dangerous country to be a woman, which I know is completely wrong. There is no FGM or dress code in India for women like many other countries, which are definitely far more than just four countries. In an educated society, women have respect and do take up important posts, include political leadership. Violent attacks and early marriages occur in uneducated regions. If India was ranked 10th based on what some right-wing leaders randomly say, then it cannot be counted as merely saying something does not count. As of now, there are special laws to protect minority religions. If it is based on a sheer numerical persecution and not the rate, it would again be wrong. For instance, consider a country with 100 people where 10 are persecuted, and then a country with 5 people where 3 are persecuted. Which country has higher rate of persecution? Since India is a large country, even a small percentage of population being persecuted would result in a very large numerical quantity. Please be careful when you make a video, and also look at whether the source of information is a neutral one. India is ranked worse than countries where there is no freedom to even choose your religion. Seriously? No one is persuaded in India. Visit India, then come on conclusion. Leftist and Western media is making all up. Yes, leftist journalists are making up stories about Christians being attacked because leftist journalists love Christians so much. I'm an Indian Christian. I love my people and my country. Hindus are not bad, unlike Islamists. Among a billion Hindus, 20 million are extremists, which is like 2%, unless I'm bad at maths. 20 million are Hindu extremists? You're not helping your case here. I've noticed Hindus and Christians are in the similar position against Islam in their respective countries. Christians need to understand that they cannot take on Islam and communism all by their own. They need allies. But Hindus in India are facing a three-front attack. Hindus would like to work with Christians if they start respecting us too. Hindus celebrate Christmas all over India, but Christians just despise us here. That'll have to change. This report is not fully true. Christians live in peace here in India. Really? In all of India? Show me where in India Christians are persecuted. I'll tell you about one area. The New York Times reports. Those who came to attack Christians here early last week set their trap well, residents say. First, they built makeshift barricades of trees and small boulders along the roads leading into this village, apparently to stop the police from intervening. Then, villagers say, the attackers went on a rampage, chanting, kill these pigs, and all Hindus are brothers. The mob began breaking into homes that displayed posters of Jesus, stealing valuables, and eventually burning the buildings. When they found residents who had not fled to the nearby jungle, they beat them with sticks or maimed them with axes and left them to die. A local official said three people died as a result of the attack on August 25th. The carefully placed roadblocks accomplished their purpose. Residents say a full day passed before help arrived. The attacks in Kandamal have destroyed or damaged about 1,400 homes of Christians and at least 80 churches and small prayer houses, 
which were set on fire, a local government official said. Clergymen say orphanages were also destroyed. Estimates from Christian groups put the death toll at more than 25, though a state official in Orissa said 16 were killed. I am afraid and will not go back to my village, said Mrs. Nayak, 25, who took shelter in a crowded relief camp in Rikia. She is among an estimated 13,500 people who have fled to refugee camps, according to Krishna Kumar, the top state official in Kandamal. Mrs. Nayak says that her husband, Bikram, was fatally wounded while she hid and that her house was destroyed. Much of this violence was set off when communists killed a Hindu leader. Christians were attacked in response to what communists did. As a Hindu, I thought Christians as an ally to fight against Islam, but both are same. Christians want to convert every religion in Christianity. Muslims want to convert every religion in Islam. You both have imperialistic mindset. Really? India? It ain't real. Oh, I think Indian Christians are more free to speak out against injustice, whereas in Islamic countries, they are silenced and threatened with death. Now, there is an important point here. I was in Africa several years ago, and I heard some of the most horrifying stories I've ever heard in my entire life. Christians were sharing stories about what Muslims were doing in their areas. I had never heard any of these stories in the media, and the main reason was that the media never heard these stories. I would tell the Christians that they need to make people aware of what was happening, but they knew that if they reported what was happening, things would get worse for them and for their families and for their communities. So yes, Christian persecution may be underreported in certain areas, whereas in places like India, most people are free to report what's going on. Point taken. I am from Mumbai, India. Few selective states in India are tolerant of Christians, but overall Christians are persecuted and not permitted to preach the Gospels by the radical Hindus. Some states have enacted anti-conversion legislation and the law is in operation for some time now, though nobody has challenged in court for freedom of religion as guaranteed by the Constitution, so much so a major denomination, the Catholic Church, is fearful of even speaking about the Gospels in public space and there are no conversions to Roman Catholicism, though under the anti-conversions law, one can become Christian provided you undergo immense bureaucratic hurdles and attacks from Hindu radical mobs. There are many small non-denominational churches doing evangelization, but the churches and house worships centers are ransacked by mobs and Christian worshipers are jailed for converting, just as what is happening in Pakistan. There, the authorities use blasphemy laws. Here in India, the authorities use anti-conversion laws to harass Christians. The problem is unique over here. The Indian Hindu society is unique with the ancient caste or class system with four main castes and many subcastes. The highest caste is the priestly class and do one cannot from one class to another, so it is mostly the lower castes people who come and join Christianity since Christian doctrine teaches all humans are equal and are created in the image of God. DW, you will. More information on Christianity in India from Ravi Zacharias, Dinesh D'Souza, and the rest of the Indians there in the U.S. Looking forward to your video on persecutions in India. So according to this list, being a Christian in India, where we celebrate Christmas as our own festival and consider Jesus as a holy man, go to Christian schools and help decorate church on Christmas Eve is more dangerous than Syria and Iraq? Up until recently, Christians had very few problems in Syria. I know a Christian who moved to the U.S. from Syria in the 1980s, but he said that he would go back to Syria to visit family. He once told me that he felt safer in Syria than he felt in Dearborn, Michigan. I said, what are you talking about? Aren't there Muslims there trying to subjugate you? He replied, Every Muslim understands that if he puts his hands on a Christian, there are going to be soldiers dragging him out of his house in the middle of the night. The government doesn't put up with that. Now, things are much worse following the Arab Spring, 
but the Christians who are still in Syria tend to be in the areas controlled by Assad. So, as bad as things are in Syria, the main problem right now isn't persecution. Ashamed and hate to see Republic of India in top 10 list. Democracy is false. India's heathen government is kleptocratic. Oh dear bustard bird, India is a wall which is protecting the world from jihad. That's not really relevant to whether Christians are being persecuted in India, but this is true. If you're concerned about the spread of Islam, then the biggest areas of concern should be the countries where there's a kind of dividing line, with Muslim control on one side and non-Muslim control on the other side. This would be places like Nigeria, where the North is predominantly Muslim and the South is predominantly Christian. India is like that as well. Muslim leaders are always trying to push the dividing line farther in order to expand the territory controlled by Islam. The non-Muslims, whether they're Christians, Hindus, or any other group, have to stand their ground without fail because the Islamic efforts to move the line will be relentless. As an Indian Hindu, we have no hate rate towards Christianity. We live in a religious harmony here. They also celebrate our festivals like Diwali, Durga Puja, and we also celebrate Christmas. In India, there are many Christian missionary institutions where we Hindus also study. But if you say about hate rate, we are more concerned about Islam than any other religions in our country. But there is a very, very small group of people compared to our population who have hate mindsets towards Christianity because of European colonization period of India, where the invaders forcefully converted small numbers of Hindus to it at that time period and destroyed our culture. Overall, today's Hindu generation don't think hostile towards Christianity. But we do think hostile towards Islam because of its ideology and its history of the persecution in mass scale of our population because of our faiths and culture. And in your video, please try to get neutral information, not from Western medias like BBC, example, telling as gunmen to those Islamic terrorists involved in 26-11 attack, Al Jazeera, etc., who have a tradition of portraying negatives towards India. Peace be with you, love and respect from India. Do mention how Christian missionaries are pumping money, just like Saudi Wahhabis, for conversion. Hinduism is a polytheistic religion, so taking another god like Jesus is not a problem. Hindus also celebrate Christmas. It is very sad to see that India is very high on the list. It is all because of the BJP oppressive government system Yet there are states like Kerala, where I am from, which is very tolerant. India was ruled by Islam for 800 years, Christians for 200 years, yet we retained our spiritual path having 85% following Indian religions. How is India on the list? Just study the forced conversions happening in India before commenting. One, Hindus retaining their beliefs over the centuries doesn't mean that Christians aren't being persecuted, so I don't see your point. Two, I keep seeing this claim about forced conversion. When I read articles about Hindus converting, I read about the caste system and how people from the lowest caste or poor people in general convert to Christianity because they hear a message about God loving them. And I hear about the people from the lowest caste or poor people attending Christian schools, because Christians are often the only ones who invite them to attend schools. They hear that they are created in the image of God, and that God loved them so much that Jesus died for them, and they believe the message. Then, when I read certain Hindu comments about Hindus converting to Christianity, I read all about the forced conversions. Apparently, Christians are torturing poor Hindus and only stopping the torture when the Hindus convert. No wonder churches are being burned to the ground. They're houses of torture and forced conversion. At least that's what I keep hearing from some of the Hindus in the comment section. India never persecuted Christians. We welcome them. But the problem starts when missionaries and Christian NGOs try to wage an intellectual and political war against Hindus of India. 
so they could carry on their conversion activities all over India. They want to turn India into a Catholic nation by any means. They use lies and money as a weapon to target uneducated, poor Hindus. The Church of India holds the record of second biggest land ownership in country after Muslims. They join hands with Indian Muslims just to ridicule Hinduism. I'm detecting a fair amount of hostility towards Christians, which is odd because I'm also being told that there's no hostility towards Christians. I'm confused. I can't believe India is among top 10. I live in Burampur, a city in state of Odisha of eastern India since 2002, when I was only 10 years old, and I can't remember there was ever a communal clash between religions. Although my parents a little withdrawn from Muslims, but my father's best friend is a Christian, and they both work in police department. I am Hindu, but when I was a kid, I went to churches during Christmas when they gave chocolates to kids in early 2000s, irrespective of religion. Well, not everyone has the same experiences that you have. It's surprising that India is in top 10, but being an Indian, I know where it's coming from. Ours is still a very poor and relatively illiterate society. Missionaries here in India are busy evangelizing and converting locals. In Northeast, it has been done completely. This process also sometimes leads to badmouthing the existing religion and its practices. These conversions are not forced. Wait, they're not forced? I thought they were forced. But by luring the people which generate hatred among some people who don't want to see their own people getting converted. India is weird in the sense that it is divided into numerous castes. Though reduced, caste-based discrimination is still there, especially in villages. Missionaries use this to convert people, and this is when some upper caste and proud members of lower caste get angry and retaliate. This retaliation is rarely against the common Christians, but against missionaries, and hence sometimes on churches too. These right-wingers exist everywhere, and same thing can be seen in Western societies when Islam is being preached in form of Islamophobic attacks. I am an Indian Christian living in northeastern India. I live in one of the only two Christian-majority states in India. Both of these states are located in the northeastern region of India. So far, it has been fine living in India as a Christian, but then again, I live in a Christian-majority state, and also the culture, customs are completely different from the rest of India. Besides that, it might be new information to a lot of you, but Northeast Indians belong to a different racial group, Mongoloid race. Yes, we look like East-Southeast Asians. We look nothing like what you'd imagine an Indian would look like. Anyway, back to the point. With the rise of a Hindu nationalist government, other religious minorities that include Christians and Muslims are being discriminated against. I personally have never experienced discrimination since I live in a Christian majority state, but the current government is gearing up towards a Hindu nationalist country where Hindus will be prioritized over any other groups. India deserved better place in your list. My fiance, who had to flee Bangladesh, is in India right now. At least India won't throw you in prison for speaking against Muhammad. There are some Christian majority states in India. I want to tell you something, David. I'm an Indian half Christian agnostic, and I want to tell you that the Indians, not all of them, especially Hindus, again, not all of them, that watch you in the matter of Islam might not be open-minded people. We in India are seeing currently a relatively increasing extreme Hindu nationalistic political narrative on some level, and there is hatred being put in the minds of Hindus against minorities, Muslims and Christians, etc., especially Muslims. So please be mindful because you don't know what's going on in our country politically and socially currently. That much, I think. I am surprised India is at 10th. It could easily get under 5 as we Christians face a lot of persecution here. Vandalizing churches, beating pastors, publicly abusing Jesus and Bible have become a new normal in India. The majoritarian Hindus have built over 20 million private armies similar to Nazi who are just waiting for the right time to create havoc. Very turbulent times waiting ahead for Indian Christians. Please pray for us. I can't believe India is on this list because there are many Christians around my neighbor. 
I studied four years in a missionary school. We don't have any problem with Christian. I'm from India. Pray for me, guys. No doubt Christians are persecuted in India. However, Christianity is doing very well there. There is growth in number of followers of Christianity in India. I think numbers of Christians are disappearing in Muslim lands. Forced abductions and marriages of young girls, etc. I don't think this happens in India. There is ample proof of this in Pakistan, Egypt, etc. In India, Christians are allies of communists and Islamists. Some say that a Christian would rather gouge out both his eyes to hurt one eye of a Hindu, even if the latter is unconditionally nice towards him. Again, I'm detecting some hostility towards Christians. I'm confused, since there is no such hostility in India. Hindutva terrorism in India, especially in North India. David dear, India is not dangerous for Christians. Christians are running the schools and hospitals. Christians have well-established businesses. The current government is allowing Christians from Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Afghanistan to get Indian citizenship. India is a land filled with churches, and Hindus respect Jesus. Christians are given reservations in almost every sector. Top army and navy officers are Christians. India is a secular country and a true democracy. I'm proud to be an Indian Christian. Regards, Rockland Rebello. Rockland, if India is completely safe, then you should track down the source of all these articles about Christians being killed and their homes and churches being destroyed. There's no Christian persecution in India. Wow, there's no Christian persecution in India? None at all? Rather, there are Christian missionaries who are trying to convert poor tribals by deception. You just have to watch a few of their absolute crazy stupid videos where they claim to be performing miracles but end up being an absolute clown in the name of Christ. Okay, so when I read Christian families beaten and left without water in latest horrifying persecution, protests after fire in Delhi church, police investigate possible arson, Delhi church vandalized, fifth church attacked in nine weeks, Church set ablaze in Mandla district. Church attacked in Jabalpur. Christians threatened to shut schools if attackers not caught. When I read these stories, I need to realize that there's no persecution in India and that all of these reports were made up by lying journalists who love Christians so much that they constantly fabricate hate crimes against them. Thank you for enlightening me. Well, Christians go to India, and they are just judgmental, with holier-than-thou attitude, calling other people's faith false, and Hindus worship the devils and idols. When Christians invaded India, they enslaved Indians and stole and looted everything. I have been living in India for the past 20 years, but didn't know that Christians in India were facing such persecution. The sad thing is, the media doesn't cover such news, so it's hard for regular people to know. The irony is India is the largest democratic and secular country. Yes, India is on the way of persecution today. Because I'm Indian, I know the Indian Christian persecution. I'm Indian Christian and did expect my country's name on the list. But above Saudi Arabia? Maybe Saudis haven't left as many persecutable Christians in their country to secure spot higher on the list. You are correct. If there were more Christians in Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia would definitely outrank India. Thank you for considering India, David. Please talk about love jihad issue where many Christian girls are converted and sent to Syria to join ISIS. Please talk about increasing Hindu extremism and church attacks by RSS, VHP, and other Hindu extremist groups. Thank you. The news about India is absolute false. Recently, 85% Hindus elected a Christian man as their chief minister, Jagan Mohan Reddy as chief minister of Andhra Pradesh. Guys, you keep committing the same fallacy. Things are okay in Andhra Pradesh, therefore things are okay in all of India. It doesn't work like that. Notice, you could use the exact same reasoning if we were talking about Muslim countries. You could point 
to an area of Pakistan where Christians and Muslims get along and say, since Christians and Muslims get along in this one area, Christians and Muslims get along in all of Pakistan. But why stop there? You could say, since Christians and Muslims get along in this one area of Pakistan, Christians and Muslims get along everywhere in the entire world. How are so many people making the exact same mistake here? In India, the RSS, along with the Modi government, is working hard to ruin Christians. No, they aren't. It's already been established that everything is perfect in India. India is number 10 on your list, and it's true. Christians are persecuted by right-wing Hindu groups like Bajrang Dal, burning churches, forced conversions back to Hinduism, etc., etc. Example, Graham Stain's story. I was born and brought up as Hindu in India, but now live in the UK. I was persecuted and thrown out of family and community. One of my friends in India was beaten up and paraded almost naked in the marketplace because of his faith in Christ. There are many more people I know who were persecuted in India. Few times I was surrounded by a mob to stop me from preaching. Once we were bombed, the Lord used me to plant 14 churches. Here you are talking about being persecuted, and your friend being beaten up, and your church bombed. But all this is impossible because there's no persecution in India. Absolutely none. I'm from India, and I'm an ex-Hindu, and you are right. Sanghis are very intolerant towards Christians. I see some Hindus in this channel. I don't know why they are even here, but I guess they are here because they get materials related to Islam from where they go forwards towards their own agenda. Many say India has become intolerant to Christians. True. The worst part are the northern states, with the exception of northeast. The southern part of India is okay-ish, or even kind of better, compared to our northern counterparts. Reasons, I believe, for increased persecution of Christians in India. Change in regime. From secular parties to right-wing party. Formation of right-wing groups and associations which keep a continuous watch against evangelization. These groups are backed by the right-wing political party and enjoy full protection. The increase in nationalism backed by Hindutva ideology. They are very proud of their ancient culture, heritage, and religion. They can go to any length to protect it from becoming obsolete. They fear that Christianity has the potential to wipe their religion as it has done to ancient religions of Asia, Greece, and of Romans. Public evangelism is banned more so by vigilante groups than by law enforcement authorities. The role of social media and communication is playing a great role in imposing and spread of right-wing ideology. Christianity is considered an inferior faith, and convertees are considered cheap, saleable, and traitors. They just cannot tolerate the idea that anyone can leave such a rich religion like Hinduism and embrace a foreign faith like Christianity, which they think was imposed by foreign aggressors like Britishers. I am an Indian, a believer who lives with her Hindu nationalist father. Trust me, folks, this ideology is turning my fellow Indians to a people without a heart. All right. Is there persecution of Christians in India? Yes. Have Christians been killed? Yes. Have churches been vandalized and burned down? Yes. Are things getting worse? Yes. That's just statistics. Are things okay in some areas? Yes. Are things bad in some areas? Yes. Should India be ranked number 10 on a world watch list of Christian persecution? That is debatable because our answer is going to depend on what criteria we use. Open Doors breaks down their scoring system. You can check out their numbers on their website. Let me say this. Given its history, India is always going to be in a very difficult position. There is a large Hindu majority, but Hindus have been under the control of other groups who often oppressed them. Oppression, even oppression from 100 years ago or 500 years ago, breeds resentment. I'm actually quite impressed that there isn't more persecution of Christians in India. Did you hear that, Hindus? 
Given human nature and the history of India, I'm surprised that the level of persecution isn't worse than it is. The three largest religions in the world, Christianity, Islam, and Hinduism, they're all right there in India. There's been a very violent history. Hindus could be handling things much, much worse than they are. So Hindus, keep in mind, when we talk about persecution, we're not pointing a finger at you and saying that you're horrible, horrible people. Human history is filled with groups persecuting other groups. But we should always be striving to get better. So we don't want to ignore persecution. We want to expose it. And we have to be watchful. Because when there's anger and resentment, there are leaders who are going to want to take advantage of that anger and resentment. Don't let them use the evils of the past to prepare for the evils of the future. And don't let them use you for their agendas. Next up, Iran.